Yo, what is up guys, just Rick here, and I haven't done a guide video in a long time, so today I want to be talking about the Preferences tab. So if you hit Escape and go to Preferences, basically it's just the options in the game. Just look in the description below for where I talk about all of the different tabs. Yeah, click on that, and we'll jump right to it. Alright guys, so first we're going to be talking about the Generals tab. It has a few settings here. Here you can see the Mouse and Camera settings, which is pretty much a very important setting. This, These two right here would determine how fast you move the camera up and down, left and right. Um, the invert mouse would change the y-axis, so your vertical, if you move your mouse up, then it'll actually move it down if you go to invert mouse. For you inverted players on those FPF games, I am one of them, but I don't like the using that setting in C9, so the mouse and a joystick movement are kind of different. The camera shake is a kind of effect, I think, that comes from certain skills and camera, like uh, cutscenes and stuff. It would just shake the camera, but I usually turn that off just because I don't like getting disoriented like that. The smooth camera movement is a, kind of like a gyration effect. You can't really tell very much, but here you can see if I move the camera, it is a little bit slower. It's not as rigid, so you see it kind of smooths out the movements. I don't like it personally. I like having my camera exactly where I want it, but if you like making more smooth videos and stuff like that, then you might want to turn that option on. These recording settings are actually only for the in-game recorder, so when you actually use, uh, I think it's F11 or F12, you actually can set the resolution here. It doesn't matter what game your resolution is at but it records it in these settings. So I personally don't like using the recording settings, but if you like using the in-game recorder, this is where you set it, not in the actual resolution of your game. And of course, it has the quality slider right here. Not very in-depth, I must admit. But the benefit of using the in-game recorder is to record the UI if you'd want it or not, which any other in-game recorder cannot do that, like Fraps and MSI Afterburner. Bandicam cannot do that. So this is, if you want to use the in-game functionality, you can disable the UI. That's pretty much the only benefit of using it. It's not very in-depth. It really only has two settings that you can choose, while most other recording software has much more. All right, so here we're in the PvP channel, pretty quiet, but we're going to be looking at some of the audio settings. So here you can see the volume sliders right here. Pretty basic stuff right here, the master volume, sound effects, and background music. I usually set this to off simply because I always get flagged for having background music in the videos for some reason. I have absolutely no idea, but um, if you set this to about here, that's pretty solid. Um, I think for videos you want to hear the sound effect more than you want to hear the music because that gets pretty redundant in a game like this. But again, like I said, for recording, that's usually off for me. Now the master volume is usually set to this low setting right here because my recorder actually records the game sounds extremely loud. If I set it to medium, it would be almost unbearably loud for video. So at least for me, the master volume is usually set to this low. And then if I need it higher, I'll just bump up the music in that file while I'm rendering. But Usually for recording, and again, you're going to have to fiddle with the settings yourself if you're recording. Usually I have to set this to low. Now, you're probably wondering what the hell this is to turn off crowd noise, and I'll show you guys. Um, if you turn that on and you're in the PvP channel, you can tell especially. Here's the sound you get. Absolutely annoying. You can hear the static. It's just a bad sound file, and it just keeps replaying, and... It's supposed to add some ambient noise in the game so it's not too quiet, but I gotta admit, it is really effing annoying. So you can mess around with some of those settings, see what works best for your recording, but I have found that this setup right here is pretty good for, for my purposes. Now this perspective settings that you see up here usually only works when you have a say 5.1 or 7.1 whatever Dolby surround or something surround any kind of surround system where you have multiple um, sound inputs coming in really if you have the 3d sound then you can t tell it where you want the sound to sound like it's coming from so if you want it sounding like from your character it'll show it'll be the sound like more centralized but if you want it from the camera it will be more of the background sound kind of thing so you can tell where the sound is coming from but really again the setting really only works if you have surround sound which I do not personally but I think I'd like to try it one time because I do have the headsets to do that but that's where you set those settings right there now a few of you guys may have uh, looked at this tab and thought that you can like put keyboard commands into it and it'll do combos for you really this setup is only for text macro so if you have a message that you say a lot or a phrase or if you say good game after everything or anything really this is the place for you so you can set up any of the macros right here I have a lot of them set up especially for people who PM me I want to be able to respond with something at least so you know I'm there and then I, I I'll get to you especially so sorry I'm busy at the moment or something like that 
and I'll respond in a second. So make sure that you have it turned on. This will turn it on and off. And um, if you have it on, say I press Shift and 2, whatever chat channel you're into right now, see, you can see it automatically comes up with the message. So it's a very useful utility, Shift 1. It does it automatically. And if you say something a lot, especially such as good game after every match, then you can have that macro set up for it. And I think it's a very convenient feature for me because if people PM me, I want to be able to respond uh, quickly and make sure that they know I'm there. So. I love this feature, but again, it doesn't do any skills. It really is just a text macro system, which a lot of games have already. All right, so the next tab we're talking about is the other tab. And I like to call this the display tab pretty much because you can pretty much customize your game to display what information you want. So you can see all of these toggle informations right here. Show info. If you guys didn't know, you can show a lot of information on your character. So here, I'm just going to turn all the information on. You can see all of this information you have. You have the guild icon, the guild title, the auspice, your guild name, your level, and your PvP rank. You can show all the information just by showing that. So for me, I kind of like making videos that... Uh, uh, don't have all the information bogging up the screen so I usually disable all of that so here you can see I don't, I don't see anything but you can toggle what information you want to show right there on the privacy tab you can see that it can automatically reject certain things such as invites to parties reject trades if people are trading you in town or spamming you and even duels I get that a lot just people just running up to me dueling me you can automatically reject that and uh, set that there. Here in this other tab it shows enable tips which are those tool tips that show up. Most of you guys who have played T9 already have disabled those or uh, if you're interested you can enable them again. Usually when you pick up an item for the first time it'll show up and have a little box and show you tips for the game which is pretty helpful if you're brand new. Show all quests is a little feature that shows up if you're a big completionist so if you want to finish all of your quests no matter what level you are you, there's where you show all of your quests again. So this this option right here basically you can show your PvP ranking here so I'm gonna actually show that for you guys here is the PvP ranking for everyone if you don't have any ranking at all you're gonna show a rank 14 there and it shows on default you cannot disable that that's not one thing that you can disable so I wish you were able to but you can either show the PvP rank which this accounts for your ranked PvP so if you haven't PvP'd at all rank 14 is the default you can also show your arena rank which shows this icon instead which uh, some people have you can see and that is just your arena PvP matches so uh, anything that isn't ranked they'll show that rank for you so you gotta choose one or the other and I wish that they had a little show info tab that could uh, disable that and don't show anything at all. Um, but that's what that does. You have to choose one or the other, sadly. I hope that sometime in the future they add a feature to disable that entirely. But the chat tab right here, you can see it has various information on your chat channels. Now here you can see I've already disabled the world and trade chat because, as you guys know, those chats usually get spammed, utterly spammed with gold sellers and gold buyers. So um, that... I've disabled myself, but uh, you can change it to whatever feed comes in here. I turn it back on and automatically get in spam. So um, there is a good pro and con to that. You won't have to deal with any of the gold sellers, but then and again, you won't be able to deal with the legitimate sellers, and you can get a lot of good deals. So you can edit around with some of these settings right here. I generally don't, but uh, you guys can mess with that. And somebody, somebody whispered me, "Thank you, I appreciate it." Wash, whoosh. You're in the video. Alright, anyway, next thing we're talking about is the key settings here. You can see that um, pretty basic binding system. You can bind any key that is on a legitimate standard keyboard. It, if you guys have one of those MLG keyboards, you can't bind the keys. But um, very basic. If you ha play a different game that has the same kind of setup, you can set up anything from movement to attacks to hotkeys, especially the hotkeys that show up on here. You can set those up. Any of the system menus, you can disable them completely and stuff like that. So pretty basic key binding. Here you can see exactly where they're mapped to as well so you don't get confused. Finally, I'll just add that C9 supports the addition of a gamepad. And I think that's really cool because I think this game actually supports gamepads very well. But the only problem is you can't plug in a gamepad while the game is running. You have to plug it in before you actually start the game. Probably for security issues, but that's not a big deal. These joypad types, though, right here, don't really change as much. Really, all what they do is change the template of what the controller actually does. I usually go with type L here, and um, I, I edit it from here. So all you really have to do when the controller is actually plugged in is click on any one of the options, or the hotkeys, basically, or key bindings, and just click on one, and then press any button 
on the controller or any combination of two buttons on the controller to map it so here I just clicked it and uh, pressed the button on the controller and that binded that key so very easy and simple binding system in this game here you can also see it has an advanced gamepad settings which basically is like your look sensitivity and stuff that you have in other FPS's so very easy and intuitive key binding system for even the gamepad but um, you can just check that out reset also resets it back to what the template default is and just hit save and that's what it goes with just note that this is not saved on the server it's actually saved on your computer so if you play your game on any different computer you're gonna have to set those bindings again also sometimes after updates they delete the binding so you might have to reset some of those as well but overall really intuitive gamepad system and I love using the gamepad um, for leisure times you know when I'm leisurely playing the game around so uh, pretty awesome settings like that here's the gamepad pretty cool the next that we're gonna be talking about is the video tab what the hell what the fuck my guy looks like shit what happened well this is the product of the video tab so here you can see my graphic setting is set to low and you might wonder why would you ever want to set this to low well the good thing is when you're in this mode you're able to play the game much faster I mean it doesn't have to load as many things to make the game look pretty it's just pretty much base stuff out there so for lower end computers that can't handle the graphics of C9 which I had to say is pretty graphic intensive this setting is awesome I was able to play this game on my low end laptop and I can't play anything, but I was able to play C9 on the absolutely lowest settings here. So I really love this for computers that can't handle it. Now you can see right here there is a graphics quality slider. And if I set it to high, it actually allows for different kind of settings. So here the motion blur, ambient, whatever, all of these, which I'll go over later, um, are not available if I have it on the low settings. So obviously you can't have it on low settings and then try to, try to amp it up with these cool effects. Um, you're going to have to change it to high quality settings before they actually show up. The sliders down here at the bottom, I'll just go over them real quick. The brightness setting, I'll just go over there, obviously. Brightness, saturation will make it look more vibrant or old timey right there. And contrast, obviously, with the darkness. Yeah, yeah, you get the effect. The brightness here is actually just exclusive to effects. So if you want to see bright effects and stuff like that, you might want to try that out if you're doing videos and stuff. I think this would be a pretty cool slider to mess with. But other than that, pretty basic sliders. This view character number right here actually affects a few things. I think it affects also how far away you start seeing people. So if you have that set to really high, you can s you see the characters loading up uh, when they're a few feet away from me. If you have it set to really high, it'll actually try to load them when they're further away. It doesn't really affect much, but view character number also affects how many characters you see. So if you go into a very densely populated area and you lag or something for some reason, you might want to set that to low because then it won't try to load all the characters. The resolution here at the top, here you can see I'm playing in windowed mode. This actually affects the screen size and this is the option that you want to mess around with when you're recording using software that isn't the in-game recorder. So you can actually play the game in any resolution you want and then go to this general tab to set how much you want the renderer to record in so it can record in uh, higher quality but the video the actual size of the window is over here so recording actual window so if you're using the in-game recorder go off of this not this but if you're using an external recorder like fraps or bandicam or something like that this is where you set that up so this is the setup that i usually like for c9 you can go if you re want real high quality stuff then you set this to 1600 by 900 but um, I found that this setting was good enough for me. Finally, we're going to talk about some of the graphics quality. So here you can see I am in the low settings right now. If you simplify the characters, the people in town load to a default model. So you can see this is the default model for the shaman class. And every shaman and warrior, and they look the same. I mean, why, why is that? Well, the simplified characters makes it so it only has to load a character one time. So if you have a really slow computer, slow internet, and you say crash or lag in town this will make all the characters the same making it much easier to load up now if you have it disabled or if you don't simplify the characters it'll try to load every single character their armor their costumes and stuff like that so that's that's a change that uh, really only affects laggy players so we're kinda in the low settings right now kinda doesn't look all that great I mean the textures are pretty bland and I mean you can see it's, it's, it's pretty lame. I gotta admit, some of the characters are just like, eh, eh. So we're gonna go ahead and set it to high, and then I'm gonna show you guys some of the features that come with it. Whoa, okay, that was a nice little transition, I think. 
So now you can see the game is much more vibrant. This is on the high settings right here, but I don't have all of the effects in. It just changes some of the graphic quality and shine and lighting and that kind of stuff. So not as bland, obviously, as it was before. And when you zoom in, you get much more character detail and stuff like that. So this is C9 played in its highest quality setting right now. So here you can see some of the effects that come in. A lot of these may, might be camera effects, but I'm just going to show them and you guys can pretty much determine which ones that uh, you like. So here, this is only supported by AMD graphics card, I should say, the light volume. And I actually have an AMD graphics card, so it allows me to change that. But I'm going to turn all of this shit on and see how well the game uh, adapts to it. So here you can see the lighting is uh, much more uh, dynamic, I'd say. There's the sun over there, so there's the lighting source. And everything casts a shadow on itself. You can see the shadows look m much more realistic and stuff like that. So really awesome. One camera effect that you might see, lensing type effect, is when you zoom into your character, if you have depth of field or something like that, um, it'll zoom into your character and it's really clear, right? But everything behind him looks all blurry and that gives a perception of depth. That's what happens when you have depth of field on. And uh, motion blur, you can see every time I move, it kind of blurs the person. These are kind of like camera effects and stuff like that. But um, here you can see some of the lighting effects coming into play. Um, you just saw like realistic lighting flashes and stuff like that sort of like a misting effect that comes with um, the the variable um, lighting the light volume so those are just various effects that come into the game that make your game look all pretty and shit but I gotta say they are not necessary for the game there's the motion blur if you look at my shield for instance it's all blurry right now that's because I'm moving but uh yeah you can see some of the light rays coming in I, th I think the graphics in this game people don't give it enough credit but I mean these the effects that they put into this game are absolutely beautiful here you can see a light ray just coming in from over there I mean it, it's really beautiful so I gotta say if you have all the effects turned on um, it really makes your videos I mean YouTube won't be able to fully show how good this looks but in game it's something that I mean if you're a graphic whore and you really love looking at beautiful games C9 has the capacity to do that for you and uh, give various camera effects as well um, to make to make it even look better. So um, that's about it for options, guys. I just wanted to end off with some of the graphic settings because I think honestly they look really beautiful, really cool. Here you can see the blurring effect. This was how it would really look if you were behind this guy, you know, camera focused on this guy. So um, just various effects that that make this game look awesome. Yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I was able to show off some of the graphics that are capable of this game. I just hope that I was able to help somebody out today or display some of the settings or the game at the highest quality that you possibly could and learn something for the preferences in this game. So, anyway, guys, I think I'm going to... I like these settings. If I can handle it, I think I'll keep them. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. Keep it classy.